All right, so in this lesson, we're going to go over um, some of the roofing line items that you need. Um, there's some items that's not going to be included, uh, but they don't usually make a, a huge difference. It's just different styles of roof and different components on the roof. But we're going to go over some of the most basic, more basic um, line items on a roof to do an estimate. So um, let's go ahead and hop into it. So I'll open this up. All right, so we're in estimate items. Let's go here, move that over. We want the line items to show in this part of the estimates that we're gonna highlight. Click, make sure that's clicked on. Then we're gonna go here. Now I have what's called macros. Macros is like saving the line items that you come and use so you can just put it in the claim to estimate a lot faster. So we're gonna use one of my macros. I have it saved in my name. Those macros you the pretty much would you have to save your own macros. Most companies don't provide macros. All right, so this the these are some of the line items that's needed to do a, a roof. So we're gonna go through them real quick. Uh, general labor. This is a this line items. This macro I got was from a public adjusting company, so they put a lot of stuff in there. You know, um, like general labor, but most insurance companies um, won't accept that because this labor is already included in all of these line items. So for example, if you click on this and then you click item image and click click for details, it says includes dump fees, hauling, disposal, and labor to remove composition shingles. And if you go to another one right here, installate uh, 30 pound felt roofing nails and installation labor. So the insurance companies are going to say well we're already paying for laborers in these line items why are we paying for labor again here so we could just take that out this is just a, a little sneaky way um to get some extra money if you are a, a public adjuster and you're dealing with the estimator that doesn't know what they're looking at or what they're doing um so roofing this is the 300 roof is for Laminated or architectural shingles, 240 roofs or for the three tabs. It says three tabs right there. Or you could go hit this, this down bar right here. And it shows you all the different styles, high grade, composite shingles, three tabs, and such and such, with felt, without felt. So let's take change this to remove so if you're going to do a roof you have to remove the, sh the laminate the shingles that's already on there so that's what you use to remove it but most insurance companies don't use that use this line item they use tear off let's delete this so we can focus on laminate um i'll show you this is a the three tab is right here this is a laminate Three tabs just look like square, um, rectangles, just bricks, and then the shingle, uh, the laminate architecturals are shingles over other shingles. You know, they're covering the little line part right here with other shingles. So let's go back here. Synthet synthetic felt is needed on all roofs. Um, unless the code, we don't use. We usually don't use this this line item, so we're gonna move, move that. We usually go with 30 or 15 pounds. Most insurance companies are gonna go with the 15 pound felt, unless the you're in an area where there's a lot of snow, heavy snow. That's when you will go with the 30 pound felt, or they or the roofer provides you with um, a code. With the codes um this company 
that I worked for wanted to use the water brain. It's more expensive, but we, most insurance companies are gonna use ice and water barrier. Whichever one you guys want to use, but insurance companies, if this is an insurance estimate, they're going to refer to the ice and water barrier. And it goes around the perimeter with the asphalt. But it, it, ice and water uh, go, also goes around, can go around um, chimneys and other areas. Um, insurance companies have a calculator to determine the appropriate amount. So this is going to be at the discretion of the insurance companies most time than a contractor or a roofer. All uh, roofs need a starter shingle. So mandatory for the roof is the type of shingle, the felt and the starter shingle. Then if it has a hip on the roof, then you need a layer of shingles that goes to cover the hip. So that's where you get hip ridge cap shingles move and replace sometimes they have a vent shingles which looks like that and that goes over just the ridges alone this is a drip edge let's see if i can find a picture of it for you Drip edge is just this little plastic thing that's right underneath the shingle, right? So if you are at someone's home, all you have to do is lift up the shingle. Well, you can actually see this from the floor because it's just a little plastic um, piece of metal thing that's right there. And it's usually white. It could be black like this one. And this is what it looks like. So if you see that of the house, you would have to um, estimate for it. And this is a good photo too, because this is valley metal. Um, if you are an adjuster, you have to take a photo showing the valley, valley metal in your report in order to include it in your estimate or the insurance company is not gonna accept that. And sometimes if you see that if there's no drip edge, if you look up and there's no drip edge, you can't include it unless um, the contractor or roofer shows that it's needed as code and they provide documentation showing that. So we just went over the drip edge. Caulking is just another, you don't really need that. The valley metal we just went over. You just type in valley in the calculator and it puts it, or if you did the sketch, it automatically populates for you. Flash pipes are these white pipes that sticks out of the roof. Those are fly, uh, flash pipes. These are turbine um, type vents. So let's take a look at those. Flash pipes. Yeah, these are just flash pipes right here. Uh, uh, let's see, turbine vents. These are vents that the wind um, goes into them and it causes them to spin, to spin, getting some of the heat out of the attic. Um, let's go back here. Mastic. Most insurance companies don't use that. Sheeting. Um, unless the there's no shingles, all the shingles have been blown off. You're probably not gonna estimate. For a for sheeting, if you're a roofer, I mean, if you're adjuster, most roofers they want the sheet sheeting. Um, and this, this is saying renail, but this is kind of um, excessive because this already has the nails included and the labors for it. So if you go to check for details, it says sheeting nails or staples and installation. So it's already saying that they're estimating for nails. So it's kind of a double dip right here. But um, some, depending on the adjuster, 
a good adjuster will catch this. Uh, some adjusters you might just let it slide. Fall protection. Most insurance companies are not going to pay for the fall protection. Some may, I, some times it might go through. Sometimes it might not. But um, usually we don't pay for fall protection. That's something that the roofing companies and contractors should provide for themselves. They're not going to be paying for that. Um, satellite dish detach and reset. So if there's a satellite dish on the roof, it needs to be um, attached and reset taken off so they can put the um, get the shingles on and off and all that stuff and then reset which means put it on um, you could try to get the if you're a contractor you could try to put the alignment and calibration on um, to try to get some more money but for the most part uh, this most insurance companies will take this off because this is something that the satellite company has to do. Mass meter, you could try to get through it with that, but most insurance companies are going to use what's called a split boot. Right here, flash pipe, flash boot, instead of the mass meter, because uh, roofers are not supposed to be playing with this up there on the roof. And you're not going to be able to give it. And this is for a new one. Remove and replace. No, most insurance companies just put a, a flash boot around it and then um, install the shingles around that. So these are some of the basic uh, line items that's required for a roof. And in the next lesson, we're gonna go uh, do a full estimate for a roof using probably laminated shingles and so you guys can see how that's done all right